Alrighty friends, so according to stats from Larian Studios, on the opening weekend alone, Baldur's Gate 3 players spent a combined 88 years on character creation. And you know what? I get it. I f***ing love character creation. So today I'm gonna take a game that took 6 years and 400 people to make, and I'm gonna use it as a doll maker. Let's make some of my characters in Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. We're making Penelope. If I was just gonna go crazy and make whatever I wanted, we'd be here all day, but I know exactly what I'm making. I'm making Penelope. I'm Penelope Mushruckus Blisterblood Merkspore. I know it's a bit of a mouthful. Penelope is my deep gnome Path of the Beast Barbarian that I've been playing in my home game for the last two years or so. Gnome, deep gnome barbarian. Okay, in our game we made up a background, it's called Fungus Farmer, but I think I'm gonna go with Folk Hero here because Penelope did like save her town from a Displacer Beast attack right before she left. Okay, I'm gonna grab my actual rolled ability scores from D&D Beyond so that it's the exact same stats. So for my actual skill proficiencies, I picked Athletic, and perception up front, which is exactly what it has auto assigned to me. So I'm gonna keep that. Now for the good part. <laughs> All right, her skin tone is actually like a lot lighter gray blue than that. Yes, freckles. Freckle intensity. Hi. Her eye color is like black. Does it not have an option for black eyes? Ooh. All eye colors, there we go, yeah. Okay, I'm going with solid black, even though I don't wear full scleras for her, but if I had them and could, I would. Makeup, so she doesn't really wear a ton of makeup. I think the only thing to change is her lip color. Whoa. I could see myself spending hours. <laughs> hours on this. Hair, 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 hair. Okay, her hair color needs to be white and she does not have highlights. It's like a gray white. Let's see if they have pigtail braids because that's the dream. They do have a fair number of hairstyles, but pigtail braids are not a common adventurer style, I would say. Oh, this is not bad. Doesn't look necessarily right from the front, but it's the right concept. Different kind of pigtail. There are a lot of pigtails. None of them are just like the exact pigtails that I want. Modern Davian Scholar. God, this looks like an asshole's haircut. <laughs> this is probably the best one. These braided bunches. Because it's like that French braided style, but a little longer. You can kind of see it from the front. Does that mean that we are done? Look at her. She's so cute. Man, I can't wait till I get to change her clothes. Okay, so let's make augury. Do you know who I am? The most important thing is that you know I'm not considered particularly forgiving. Augury is one of my villain NPCs. She's a sorcerer and a smuggler boss. I actually haven't thought about Augury's tiefling subrace because I've never played her as a PC. She's a sorcerer, so I feel like it makes sense to make her a Mephistopheles tiefling if they're gifted with an affinity for magic. Sorcerer. Ooh, that's a cool outfit. Friends, I do feel like she would do friends. I don't want true strike. All right, we're gonna go with Firebolt, Friends, Minor Illusion, Light. I'm not building this based on what I think will be effective in the game. I'm building this based on what I think Augury would have before anybody starts lecturing me on my Baldur's Gate strategy. Cause she's just less of a fighty person and more of like a, she's a schemer. Subclass, Wild Magic, Draconic Bloodline, or Storm Sorcery. I do not think she's a wild magic person. She is the, the opposite of chaos. Storm Sorcery it is. Her background is actually noble. She was raised by nobles. Okay, they've given her her highest stat and charisma, but I definitely think her intelligence needs to be higher. Deception for sure. I feel like insight over arcana. Let's make her red. Yep, that's pretty much exactly what I want. Bright red. Oh, there's little bird skulls. I think since I can't give her her bird skull amulet in this character builder, I'll give her the earrings to make up for it. The gold with the black sclera is like really cool for her. I usually just wear a regular gold, but that just feels so much better. A smoky eye, definitely needs a smoky eye. And then she wears a pretty dark red lip. Okay, there's a hairstyle that I know is gonna be right for her. It's this sort of traditional elvish one. This one, pinned and perfect, it's called. <laughs> and it should be black, true black. Horns, 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 horns. Stygian skewers, it's probably gonna be these. See, I love that they're gonna let me customize the horn color into gold because people are like, why are her horns gold? Does she paint her horns gold? And I'm like, don't judge her. She'll do whatever she wants for fashion. There we go. That looks like augury to me. Are you sure you're a monster hunter? You don't 
really look like one. That's because I'm a Cottages and Cerberus character. It's a new tabletop game that just launched on Kickstarter. In it, characters tend to their gardens, decorate their cottages, build relationships and romance with NPCs, and yeah, hunt some monsters. Whoa, the weeds in your garden don't stand a chance. Oh, this old thing. First I hunt, and then once I find the monster, it's time for a quick but brutal boss battle. Once my blade has tasted blood, I harvest parts from the monster to craft items and make my cottage cozier. Dang, that's intense. Thankfully, there are comprehensive rules for creating your own unique homey cottage hideaway. Between monster hunts, enter cozy mode for everything from gardening to decorating to weekly chores. If you earn enough cozy points, the goddess of the moon will bless your cottage. I admit, that does sound great but I don't really have time to learn a new system. It's so easy to learn, you could be playing in 10 minutes. There are even quick start characters if you don't feel like customizing your perfect little cottage core cutie. Plus, there's an add-on where you can get a conversion for 5th edition D&D and Pathfinder 2E, so you can bring some cozy vibes into your favorite tabletop game. Okay, I'm sold. I'm ready to become a monster hunter. Just pledge at the link in the description. Oh, and you'll need this, of course. Oh, I kind of thought you'd give me a sword. Thanks, though. Next up. Necrasha. Necrasha is my half-orc barbarian. Once I saw bear catch fish in open mouth, I would like to do this. The thing about Necrasha is that even though I cosplay her, the, the canon Necrasha, I imagine her being like very tall and strong, which I am not. So it's always exciting to get an opportunity to see her like as I envision her. Half-orc. Class. Barbarian. Nakrasha's background would definitely be Outlander. I have a real problem with creating characters with the Outlander background. I feel like half my characters have the Outlander background. I don't think she's probably that wise, but I think she's pretty charismatic. She admires bears a lot, so I guess that'll be my justification for animal handling. Oh, that face. So many tusk options. Okay, I feel like this is like the pretty girl tusk option, and as much as people make fun of me for making Nakrasha like a pretty girl orc, I think this one looks more like I imagine her looking. Skin tone. Definitely green, but I feel like brighter, brighter than this green. Not lighter, just more saturated is what I want. Lime tone three. That looks a lot more like the green that I usually use. Okay, scarring. This is exciting because Nakrasha does have a scar. She has a big one that goes just like this across her nose and her cheek. Okay, Nakrasha's eyes are like a bright yellow green. Elf gold two is probably the closest that we can get. Makeup, Nakrasha gets a smoky eye, obviously. Whoa, that is a heavy smoky eye. I don't want it to look too femme. I want it to look like she sleeps in it. So yeah, it's gotta be this one. This one is good and messy. And then her lip tint, she has like a black, like a blackish purple lip, which looks kind of silly on this character model, to be honest. It looks cool on me. God, what I would give for the ability to customize like eye shape, nose shape, mouth shape. So Nakrasha's style is like down and loose with braids, kind of like this, but this is too neat. It needs to look less like she did it this morning and more like she did it two weeks ago. I might have to pick a less accurate hairstyle that has more accurate vibes. This is for some reason hilarious to be. Imagine if this is what Nakrasha's hair looked like. It looks like Nakrasha if she were Snow White. <laughs> All right, honestly, I think it's gotta be the braided side. I just don't see any others that feel like they have the right vibes. It is weird to me that they have so few long hairstyles that feel like unmanicured. Nakrasha. This is a perfect opportunity to make Elowin as Necrasha's guardian. I didn't even think about this. Yes! You're in good hands. I only lose half my patience. Sorry, joke. Elowin is a half-elf battlefield medic and Necrasha's girlfriend. That's right, it's canon. She is a wood half-elf. Okay, Elowin is pretty fair-skinned. Any character that uses my skin tone <laughs> is pretty fair skinned. No body art, no piercings. She's kind of bland looking to be honest. She has my eyes, so dark brown, maybe not that dark. Makeup, very, very minimal color. So she's got kind of, oh yikes. She's got kind of like a, she has kind of like a dusty blonde. Oh, I don't mind brown gold. It does seem like it's a little lighter than that though. <sighs> or blonde strawberry, that's not quite right. I keep going back to blonde gold three, so that's what I'm sticking with. This one is more accurate to her actual hairstyle, but it just looks so extravagant. She's busy working as a battlefield medic. She doesn't have time to do her hair. That would be a really cute hairstyle on Elowin, let's be real. This just looks like Prince Charming in Shrek. Okay, I'm reconsidering the hair, just really quick. Yeah, even though this hair is a little too styled, I feel like this says Elowin more than the other one does, especially because the wig I use for her is really long. Now Elowin can 
guard Necrasha. I like to think that they would guard each other in different ways, you know? Like, Elwyn is there for when Necrasha inevitably does something reckless and gets hurt, and Necrasha is there to cleave the head from the body of anyone who looks at Elwyn wrong, like a good girlfriend. Venture forth! Okay, it's been several hours, and I think I have finally gotten my fill of the character creator. Maybe now I should actually play the game. I know everybody is making Baldur's Gate 3 content right now because we're all very excited, so I'd love to know what, if any, Baldur's Gate 3 content you would like to see from me. I don't know. Let me know. Okay. Why are you still here? I'm trying to play video games.